Hey guys, before we get rolling here, I just want to thank those of you who have left me a review on iTunes. This helps me keep the podcast free, so please keep them coming. Tell your friends. I also want to thank those guys that have been sending in the questions. Um, This is what this podcast is about. It's about getting you the info that uh, you need to help become a better hunter. Uh, Now you can actually go to my website, interviewswiththehuntingmasters.com, and click on the Ask the Pro section. And you can send me your questions there. And you can even suggest a guest. And lastly, before we jump into this episode, I want to shed a little light on one of my sponsors, Sneak Tech Sneak Boots. Uh, I've been wearing them now for several years, and they've really upped my stalking game. I'm, I'm not a very sneaky person. Um, and I find that that extra added... Um, stealthiness that they give me has really, really improved my stock. I believe in them so much that I've decided to give away one pair each month to a lucky subscriber. So if you're a subscriber, once a month, I'm going to be announcing a winner to win a pair of Sneak Tech boots. So go ahead and go check them out at sneaktech.com and that's S-N-E-E-K-T-E-C.com. Let's get to the next episode. Welcome to another live edition of Interviews with the Hunting Masters. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, draw you know, strategies and out-of-state tag strategies. Um, we're going to basically help you put together... Uh, a system or at least give you some information to help you start putting together a system and start getting some of these premier tags or just get the hunting opportunities. Um, so without further ado, I have uh, Ro- Robert Hanneman uh, on the phone with us. He's the chief um, researcher for Hunting Fool. So Robert does this day in, day out, uh, helps people achieve their dreams uh, with Hunting Fool and, and getting these uh, – Premier Tags. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm good, man. Can't complain. Just uh, my my computer's not is throwing me off, so it seems like I'm going a little uh, little choppy right now. It's because it keeps beeping at me. <laughs> it's like every time I say something, it's beeping at something else that's making me sound a little funny here. But uh, otherwise, today's good, man. Good day. Got up nice and early. Hit the gym. I drew two elk tags so far this year, so I got to get my butt in shape. So, which elk tags did you draw? Um, I got a uh, Wyoming uh, tag 35 uh, in the Bighorns, and I got uh, that's archery, and then I got an archery elk um, in the Central Manti in Utah. Nice. Yeah, no, that's, excited about that. That, that ought to be good. Yeah. No, so you, I I drew an Arizona archery elk tag, so that oh, started my year out pretty good, and then I got a sweet. Montana 900 elk tag, so no nice. it's going to be a busy year. Nice. Those are both good tags. How long did it take you to get the Montana tag? Um, I'm a resident, so I can oh, do it every year. Jeez, that's right. I forgot you. Yeah. I forgot you were in uh, – where you were, Missoula? Uh, just south of Missoula, yep. So, yeah, no, okay. I – Work for the hunt full. I'm down there December through about May 15th, and then the rest of the year I'm going to spend in Montana. So it's pretty good living. Which tag did you get in Arizona? I uh, drew unit 22 on the archery tag. Oh, jeez, that's a good tag. Yeah, and it's after the muzzleloader and rifle yep. season this year, so yeah, they moved it. it. Yeah, I'm I'm excited that late rut's going to be great this year. Yeah, yeah, it it seems to be in cycles, and it's definitely. This is the year that it comes. This is the cycle of the year that it comes a little bit later. I'm glad they finally made some adjustments on some of those tags. Um, so, yeah, I, um, yeah, so far I just got those two elk tags. I also drew a, uh, a deer tag in the Central Manti as well. Um, other than that, I'm playing the over the counter game, going to, um, going to go to California in July. Um, and then, I will, from there, my first hunt will be that Utah hunt. I'm going to do the uh, earlier August part of that hunt uh, because of the Wyoming tag. And then uh, 
I'll have the hunt in Wyoming, and then uh, I go to Missouri, do a little whitetail hunting, New York, a little whitetail hunting. Then um, actually right now, right before we got on the line, I was uh, filling out my my tag uh, or my application for a, a deer tag in South Dakota for uh, statewide archery. And so I plan on doing that in November and then pretty much finishing out my uh, season here. I'm, I'm dialing it back a little this year. I usually do about 12 hunts, but I'm going to do probably six to eight tops. So got a, got a lot on my plate. So. No, it sounds like it. Did you draw 35 with someone or did you put it on your own? On my own. Okay. I got a buddy up here in Missoula that drew that 35 archery tag. Yeah. Yeah. No, it should be a good hunt. Yeah, it's it, it's a good. I've been there before. Um, my buddy lives there, and I've hunted with him um, a couple times there. I actually helped him get his last bull there. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely a good tag, and um, I have high high expectations for it. So I'm gonna try to hold out. I got I got a little bit more time to spend there, and I'm going kind of like peak of the rut. So hopefully, uh, we'll be able to put something together, get some good good on the ground. Um, Utah, um, I've, I've only hunted that unit once. I hunted it last year for, uh, for deer. I got an idea where, um, you know, where some bulls are. I actually watched about a three, 340, 350 bull, uh, for, you know, about 10, 15 minutes, um, one morning when I, when I was glassing for deer. Um, so I got, I got an idea. I'm excited. No, oh, that's good. Well, that's what's nice. You draw a couple good tags and you can fill in the rest of the season with over-the-counter tags. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of some of the stuff I want to talk to you about today. I know a lot of guys are kind of intimidated about getting into the, uh, you know, the tag game and, you know, not everybody, you know, um, has experience or has anybody to lean on. And, you know, to be perfectly honest, I've been doing this for years. I've been, I've been putting in for like, 30 40 tags a year for i don't know a long time and that's why everybody's like oh you get so many tags i'm like well shit, i've been putting in forever and i put in for so many i throw my name in so many hats eventually i'm gonna pull something um so but um why don't you uh, give us a quick rundown about yourself and then uh we'll jump into some of these questions that i got and then we'll see if anybody online right here has got any well, cool. So my name is Robert Hanneman. I've been working for the Hunt and Fool since 2012. Uh, me and Garth Jensen are the main two guys that write most of the research that goes into the magazine. Um, it's a great job. We get to spend a lot of time in the field every year. Um, both of us probably do in the neighborhood of you know 12 to 15 hunts a year. And I would say 80% of those are over-the-counter hunts. And, uh, you know, we can't, if you just waited on draw tags your whole life, you'd never be able to draw those. And over the counter tags is kind of the reason I ended up in Montana. So I was born and raised in a little town called Fernley, Nevada, and, uh, you know, grew up there and graduated high school. And, you know, you get to start hunting when you're 12 in Nevada. <clears throat> And every single year I got lucky and I got a deer tag, um, you know, because I was willing to pick up a bow, muzzle a rifle, whatever it took. So, um, but it just wasn't enough for me. And I hated living and dying by the draw. And so I started to kind of explore other options. And uh, a buddy of mine, a real good friend in high school, his dad was one of the original hunting full members. So he had this stapled together little four or five pieces of that paper that kind of explained, you know, hey, start applying the West, look at other options. So I started doing that in high school. You know, my buddy in 16 started applying for Arizona, Utah, Oregon, and kind of started expanding from there. Um, you know, I got to be about 20 years old, and I'd done some guiding in a couple of different places and moved around and just, just couldn't get enough hunting. So I decided I needed to move away from Nevada. As much as I hated to leave Nevada, I needed more opportunity. So I ended up uh, looking at Alaska, Idaho, um, Wyoming, and Montana. My mom and dad vetoed Alaska right off the bat. They're like, it's just way too far away. So, uh, you know, I started looking at those three states and I ended up choosing Montana. So I moved to Montana and I was probably hunting 200 days a year 
um, with all the over the counter tags in Montana. And I was living 30 miles from Idaho, hunting Idaho over the counter, and then getting lucky and drawing one or two great tags every year. And uh, then it just kind of expanded to the point where, you know, I was applying for 20 plus states and, you know, putting 50, 60 applications in a year and every year drawing one to three great tags. And, um, you know, but I got 20 points in a lot of states in the West. I got lucky. I started when I was 16. So I'm just hoping to outlive everybody and draw a desert sheep tag someday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got lucky. Um, and I really, I mean, I had a lot of points, but I didn't have, you know, the same amount of points that some of these guys have. Um, I don't remember where I read it, but I read somewhere that the average elk hunter, age of the average elk hunter is like 60 years old. Or not elk hunter, excuse me, sheep hunter. Um, <laughs> I was like, whoa, that's pretty crazy. And it was kind of evident too, because when I went to the, the banquet, um, when I drew, I mean, most of the guys in there were, you know, older you know late 50s early 60s and i was and they were all like uh they all were giving me the look like oh you little bastard you can't believe you got it. i mean i'm not that young i'm 42 well, i'm 41 gonna be 42 um yeah so but um so i got a i got a couple of questions that i've been saving up here um and I actually kind of wanted to get you on earlier while we were still in draw season, and we'll probably do another one, uh, you know, later on here in the year or, or, you know, at the end of the year when the people are starting to look again. But uh, draw season is coming to an end, and, you know, what what kind of over-the-counter uh, recommendations, what kind of opportunities do you – do you suggest guys start looking at to kind of um, supplement their, you know, draw? Well, it depends. I mean, let's narrow it down by species. I mean, do you want to talk mule deer? Do you want to talk black tail, yeah. white tail, elk? Let's, you know, let's talk. Um, let's talk elk first, and then maybe we'll talk a little bit about uh, mule deer because I think those are the two most popular. Um, and we'll start with those two, and then if anybody's got any questions, then uh, we'll go. We'll expand on it. Perfect. So for me, uh, I live in Montana. Montana is a state that um, even as a non-resident, if you miss the draw, there's still roughly a thousand elk tags still left over. So Montana is not a complete over-the-counter state, but usually the last five years, there's been tags available all the way through the hunting season. So uh, Montana is uh, one of the states we'll talk about. Idaho, another great state, Oregon, um, and you know Colorado. So those are probably the four states that come to mind for me when we're talking over the counter opportunity. Wyoming's a draw, you know, any of the Southwest states, Nevada, New Mexico, unless you got lots of money and you want to buy landowner tags, um, right. you know, we're going to rule all those out. So for me, Colorado, Oregon, Idaho, Montana. Um, Colorado is probably one of the most popular because they have the most elk. Um, it's one that I don't hunt because I live in Montana and I'm right next to Idaho and Oregon. So it's easier for me to hunt that country than to drive all the way to Colorado to hunt elk. Um, and right. I like to chase bigger bulls on average. I'm not saying I'm a trophy hunter. I like to hunt Pope Young type bulls. You know, if right. I can get a mature six point, I'm super jacked. And I know that any area in Montana uh, or Idaho is going to produce that bull in most areas in Oregon. So it kind of depends on, you know, what my timeline's looking. Um, you know, I personally like to hunt Idaho and Montana the most. You know, you've got a six week archery season in Montana followed by a five week rifle season in Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, you're limited to the last week of August, most of September, and then Idaho, most of the month of September. Um, so those are my states that I go to. Um, if I was a non-resident and didn't live in one of those states, I'd probably Idaho would be the state that I'd look at the most. You can purchase up to two tags. If you're up there and you're hunting elk and you stumble upon a bear or a mountain lion or a wolf and mm -hmm. that season's open, shoot that, put your elk tag on it, drive into town, buy another elk tag. Um, and a lot of guys are afraid to get physical and really get into the back country. And, uh, and, and everybody believes that there's no elk left in the West. The wolves have killed them all off and you know, there's plenty of elk and they're doing yeah. great. So, um, it just takes a little bit of boot leather. I mean, you gotta, it's not easy. We're not, you know, watching a Primos video and you're going to go out and be chasing six point bulls every day. I mean, no. you're going to have to work hard, but I mean, there's tons of bulls out here and uh, there's almost more opportunity than there is time. Me and Garth Jensen were talking about this and like, we're so excited about all the opportunity hunts that we're doing this year that we mm -hmm. had to cut hunts out because we had too many scheduled. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, 
guys, when guys tell me I haven't hunted in three years because I haven't drawn a tag, I just, there's so much opportunity out there that has great potential to kill a great animal, no matter what species it is. And uh, that's what you need to do. Then you got to get good before you draw a great tag. You got to have some right. experience. So, yeah. no, I mean, it's, the, it's unlimited opportunity, you know, in, in all these states. And most of them have like, you know, a deer season in Oregon or Montana or Idaho that's going to happen at the same time, you know, in Colorado, all the deer's on a draw. But, you know, there's, there's four states right there where with a bow, you can be chasing, you know, either sex elk and, you know, then there's a lot of rifle stuff, you know, in the other states too. So it's right. There's a lot of opportunity right now in the West for guys to be hunting good bulls. Yeah. Um, I've hunted Colorado. I, I, I was not successful. I only went there one time. Uh, I hunted Montana also was not successful. Um, but mainly cause I was splitting that hunt up between deer and elk and I just got more excited about the deer that I was seeing than the elk. So I kind of spent most of my time trying to put a deer on the ground. Um, but yeah, I mean, like you said, if, if and it's something I kind of wanted to touch on that guys are not hunting, uh, you know, and waiting to draw tags and basically not getting any experience. Um, I've heard, I've heard this all too many times, like, oh, you know, it's been 12 years since I've gone elk hunting and, you know, if you're not like joining your friends or that are drawing tags and you're not getting out there by the time you draw that tag you're not even gonna know what the heck to do you know or or you're gonna have to pay a guide or or you know um you know which is fine but you're you're missing out by not going uh out of state or uh you know going to look elsewhere so to speak because you know you might like you said you live in a state i for me everything's out of state if i want to get it over the counter except for deer but um it, it's I, I think it's foolish you know um of course you know there's it's cost prohibitive too if you can't do it you can't do it uh nobody's going to knock you for not being able to do it but even that you know get out there take a couple days off one of your buddies draws go out with them get the experience because elk hunting um you know it's one of those things if you, you spent 12 years 10 years whatever to draw a tag um you don't want to squander that opportunity that's uh, you know, just my opinion but um anyway um if a guy or girl wants to start playing the draw game and you know they're relatively young you know, mid twenties or whatever, or even up to about 30 years old. Um, and they want to start looking at some of these premier hunts like sheep or moose or mountain goat. What are some of the things that, or not some of the things, but what are some of the states that they should be looking at for, let's say, let's start with sheep, uh, that even have, you know, a mathematical chance of drawing, uh, a tag. First of all, I just want to back up real quick to your to your last question. So mm -hmm. we talked about, you know, a guy waiting 12 years to do a hunt. Um, you know, there's there's different thoughts about that. You could come out every single year, purchase an over-the-counter tag in Idaho, every year come out, give it a week, and you're learning as you go. And you're you're spending a week there, you're you're getting better, you're understanding elk. And you know, what's the average guy kills a bull, you know, in these western states? you know, probably one every 10 years, you know, if you're really good, you know, one every five years. If a guy wants to accelerate his learning curve, there's no reason not to, you know, come out and do a guided hunt and learn from those guys. That's the one thing that I see guys do wrong a lot is they'll go out and they'll hunt three or four times and finally get some encounters and they don't know what to do. There's nothing wrong with going on a guided hunt your first time and just trying to figure things out, learn, then take all that knowledge and then start doing do-it-yourself hunts up front. You know, if you had to save for two years or three years to do that hunt, instead of going every year, every year after that, you're going to have all that knowledge ahead of there. And then, you know, don't be a trophy hunter when you start out. You see a cow, yeah. you see a bull, put an arrow in it. You know, you get better by, you know, 
killing animals. Like I've watched some guys that are phenomenal 3D shooters that outshoot me and everybody I know all day long. You get an animal in front of them and they, they just can't handle it because they've never killed an animal. So just go out there and practice. But uh, don't be afraid to do a drop camp or to do a guided hunt or to buy a scouting package. You know, oh, yeah. um, that, you know, elk hunting is, is, is awesome and everybody loves it, but it's a lot of work and they're big animals and you got to cover a lot of country to see them. So with that being said, you know, don't be afraid to get started. You know, that's the biggest problem is everybody doesn't want to take that step. You know, they're, they're like, Hey, I got this much money saved up. I'm going to buy some new gear. And they constantly buy a new gear. They go, Oh, it's great gear. And they never go hunting. <laughs> so I, I mean, just take that first step. And even if it's going on someone else's elk hunt, like you said, and going out there and experiencing it, learn from yeah. there, and just kind of go that direction. But I mean, that's, if you really want to get into hunting the West, um, you know, you got to dive in with both feet and, and get out there and spend some time there, you know, and if you got to incorporate your family vacation to, you know, along with a hunt, you know, you got to do that. So, I mean, we get guys that call yeah. all the time and are doing things like that. So don't be afraid to get started. There's plenty of opportunities out here um, for everything you can think of. I could completely fill my schedule from mid August until, you know, the middle of January on over the counter hunts and mm -hmm. be hunting every single day. So yep. you don't have to draw a tag. There's plenty of amazing adventures out there that are waiting to be had. And a lot of the biggest animals you see killed in the West every year are coming on some of these over the counter units. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and why? Because the guys that are killing them are, getting out there and hunting every year. They're learning the terrain. They're learning the habits. They're learning everything about these animals. And that affords them the opportunity to, to kill a, a, you know, a trophy like that. Um, I mean, you see it all the time. Um, I, I really like what you said about learning, you know, going with a, uh, outfitter and learning, uh, it's something I kind of been preaching to people because there's a real big, um, stigma, so to speak, uh, that is, is, even growing more and more uh, within social media that I see guys getting bashed for using outfitters um, and, and um, people being made to feel bad that they used an outfitter or a guide. Um, you know, there's, there's certain different levels of, of what those are. Most guided hunts um, it's basically like going with a buddy who knows the area really well, you know, uh, and, and, and those, uh, it's not like he's grabbing your hand and, you know, walking you through the woods and, and setting you up in a spot and saying, okay, he's going to come right here. I mean, and some of those hunts are like that, but, um, you, you do have to apply a lot of woodsmanship and, and uh, hunting skill yourself. And it's a great way to learn from somebody who knows better than you. Um, moving on from that, uh, I started to ask you about if guys, girls, whatever, wanted to get into, uh, you know, like a sheep haunts or, you know, moose or mountain goat or something that's really hard to draw. You know, what are some of the states that they should be looking at that they have a mathematical chance of drawing? Well, first we'll talk about sheep. You got to mm -hmm. ask yourself, what sheep do I want to hunt? Do I want one sheep in my trophy room or you got oh. your elk, your deer, your moose? If you just want one sheep, don't even apply. Just go to Alaska and do a dull sheep hunt and then be done and save all that money ahead. If you want the desert, want the rocky, want all the sheep, then you got to jump in and, you know, it, it's almost you got you want to go full tilt within reason. Um, you know, the odds are essentially – give or take under 3% for every draw there is for any of the Western states for sheep. So, I mean, there's no, you know, for sure sheep tags. I'm a perfect example. I'm 38 years old. I've been applying for sheep for over 20 years in most of the Western states. Mm -hmm. I've not drawn a sheep tag. You know, I've drawn mountain goat, moose, everything else. I haven't drawn a sheep tag. I talk to guys every year, first year ever applying, drew a Nevada desert sheep tag. So it happens, but it hasn't happened to me yet. So if I had to pick a state um, and, you know, I guess we'll break them down that 20 and 30 year old and, uh, you know, they're going to go in for the long haul. So they're 20 or 30 years old and they're going to be in this until their hunting career is over. So the long haul, I would say Nevada, Nevada would be my number one state. 
Nevada is going to give 20 plus desert sheep tags. They're going to give five or six California sheep tags. When the Rocky Mountain herd kind of rebounds, they're going to give another Rocky Mountain tag. So at one point, we were applying for three different sheep tags there. Right now, you can apply for two. So Nevada would be one of the would be the number one sheep state that I'd recommend someone jump in and start applying for. Um, you know, to follow that up, they have a great system where they square your bonus points but everybody has a chance it's not like wyoming where 75 percent are you know held for the guys with the most points you know someone can draw nevada with no points compared to a guy with 25 points so nevada is my number one state I'm probably going to follow that up with arizona just because the number of tags they give out there also so nevada and arizona are going to be my number one and two states we're talking for a young kid here um, you know, so that's going to be number one, number two, um, you know, after that, it's kind of going to start to get to a, a more great area, maybe Colorado, maybe Montana, um, areas that states that have points where they're going to build over a lifetime. Right. So now we, we jump ahead to the 50 year old guy and he's like, I'm all in, I want to hunt sheep. Well, we're talking Idaho. We're talking Oregon. We're talking states that do not have a bonus point system. So he's equal to the guy that's been applying for 20 or 30 years. So the Idaho, you know, the Oregon, those are going to be the ones I'd recommend for those guys. Um, you know, Montana, I live here. And I know residents that have lived here for 30 plus years, never done a sheep tag. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want to hit that gym a little harder, you can come hunt the Unlimiteds. It's crazy. It's awesome. We see grizzly bears. We've killed some rams in there. It's amazing. You know, and there's five areas where you can buy a sheep tag over the counter. But, right. uh, you know, you got you got to like grizzly bears and, you know, high lonesome places. So, uh, you know, there's – it's going to be one of those deals where no matter where you go, a sheep is going to be – when you do draw it, um, like you, for example, you probably – had talked to guys that drawn sheep tags before thought right. you could kind of understand the emotional, uh, you know, uh, things that were happening when those guys would talk to you. And right. you kind of thought like, Oh, I know what it's like. And then you drew your tag. And it's like, I had no idea what it was like. Oh, I, nothing you like know? you'd ever think of in your life. Exactly. So, you know, that, that's a, that's a drug you can't buy something like that, that just, you know, gets shot through your system. So, um, for sheep, it's one of those deals where I don't care if you're 20, I don't care if you're 12, you may never draw, but yep. there's hope and you got to keep trying, you know, yep. and if you got deep pockets, there's lots of other things. What I'd recommend for all those guys from 12 to 90 that you're still applying for sheep is going on some of these raffles and don't get carried away, you know, and drop hmm. hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I make sure I have my name at least in every raffle there is. And I might only buy one ticket, $10 here, $20 here. $20 here, but every one of those sheep draws throughout the West for raffles, my name is in the hat at least once. So sheep's a long haul. If you got deep pockets, you know, you can buy the tags, but other than that, um, you're just going to be playing this draw game like the rest of us and hoping for the best. Um, right. That's kind of the worst of it. Everything else we talk about, there's a lot better chance at drawing tags. So, yep. but sheep is the biggest draw there is, but um, we're 20 to 25 years into a lot of these bonus point systems. I don't know what's going to happen. These guys are starting to unfortunately die off. We talk yeah. to guys every year and they're like, I'm 78 years old. I got 23 points for Arizona. Am I ever going to draw a tag? I don't know. Probably Most likely not. not. Yeah. So, no, oh, it's kind of sad. Yeah. But uh, no, so sheep is tough. Uh, moose, we'll jump over to them. Yeah. Um, if, if you're looking for Shiras moose, the only state you should be applying for is Idaho. If you've got the extra financial means, man, Colorado's killing some giant bulls. Montana's always got some good bulls. Uh, you know, Wyoming and then probably Utah. But if you can only apply for one state and you want the best odds of drawing, hands mm -hmm. down, Idaho is where you need to apply for Shiras moose. Um, and they got the best bulls. I mean, if you want to go and just kill a moose, you can go to Canada, you can go to Alaska, and you can go to Alaska and do I, a DIY hunt. So, but if you want to get technical, and a lot of guys do, and they want one of each of the moose, you know, your Shiras moose, Idaho is your best bet. If you want to talk Canadian moose, but you're a DIY guy and you don't want to go guided, think about applying for Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire. Maine's your best bet at drawing a tag, you know, and then same thing, Alaska, if you're DIY, you can go up there and do a good float hunt. It's just like we talked about on the elk. You've got to be willing to jump in. You got to take that step, you know, logistics, plan it out, do everything. But man, when you're up there and you're on a river for 14 days, it's the coolest thing in the world. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I've been putting in for New Hampshire and, and Maine for a long time. Um, 
got to be careful with them if you miss it, don't you? You you lose your points if you stop, but you miss a year, right? Yes, yeah, every one of those states are different. Some of them yeah. you miss one time, you're done. Others are up to three years. So yeah, no, it's it's yeah. uh, it's think, a way where you can get those points purged fast. I think Maine is you miss it once, you're you're they're gone. I think because I want to say I lost my points. I don't know if it was Maine or New Hampshire, but I, I lost it in one of those two, and and I had to restart <laughs> over, and I was so pissed because I had you know probably four or five points, and then uh, you know I made a mistake or whatever, forgot to put in. But uh, I, I've, Moose is uh, definitely on the hit list. I've actually gone moose hunting twice um, in Canada. And, and another time I got to go in Idaho, I was invited onto a uh, by uh, a Native American to go hunting, uh, you know, invited by the, by the tribe to go hunting on their, uh, on their reservation. Uh, but I, I didn't score an elk, oh, excuse me, a moose on either one of them. Um, Unfortunately, I didn't see any legal moose, any Mises. Um, but uh, what about mountain goat? I know this is definitely – that's definitely like one of my top hit lists. I'm like I'm a big, big fan. I really, really want to go mountain goat hunting. So it's the same kind of thing with the sheep. I mean, if you are planning to go on a guided mountain goat hunt when you draw – the, uh, you, you, there's really no reason to be applying in the lower 48 go to alaska you know spend the money go on a great guided hunt kill mm -hmm. a kill a bigger goat than you'd probably kill down here and you can plan it on your timeline on your schedule when you're ready to go plan it a year or two out and you can have a great adventure um mm -hmm. if you want to play the draw game you know montana you know colorado um Nevada gave an on-resident goat tag this year, Wyoming, Idaho, Oregon, Washington, all those have great goats, um, but they're very stingent on the amount of goat tags they give. A lot mm -hmm. of these states manage herds for like, you know, one tag per 75 or 100 goats in the herd. Uh, Montana is the only state that gives a ton of goat tags. Montana gives more non-resident goat tags than all the other states combined. So if I was going to tell a guy that he wanted to come up and do it on himself, do it the hunt himself, <clears throat> Montana's a state to apply. I drew a right. tag back in 2004. Uh, me and my buddies went in with a bow, killed a great billy. It was an amazing hunt, um, you know, and I've been applying for the last couple of years, hoping to draw another tag. But uh, if you really just want to kill a good goat and you, and you want to go on a guided hunt, um, the amount of money that you would spend applying for those five or six states we talked about, um, mm -hmm. you could pretty much go to Alaska and do the hunt that in the time frame it might take you to draw those other tags. Okay. So, you know, I mean, it's the one thing with a goat, if you, if you just want to do it, Alaska is your way to go and you can do everything from, you know, fly in hunts, to backpack hunts to, to boat hunts where you're hunting, you know, off the ocean, you, you know, combine it with uh, sick of black tail deer on Kodiak. You can, you know, combine it with uh, bear hunting. And then there's places like on Kodiak Island where you can actually shoot two goats. So you can mm -hmm. go up on one trip and shoot two mountain goats. So if you're really looking to do a goat hunt and you want to do it on your timeline, you might want to just go to Alaska and go up there and have a great adventure. Yeah. We just got a question from Xavier uh, Cardova. He was asking about New Mexico. How easy – I've tried to check out their website. It's kind of confusing. I'm assuming – Maybe we'll have to – I just texted him over here, sent him a message here that's asked him what species he was talking about. Um, I mean, I've been – oh, antelope and elk. He just answered back. So for antelope and elk, how is New Mexico um, for a place to apply? So New Mexico is, is kind of neat because there's no bonus point system. So everybody's equal. Um, the draw is broke down. You can apply for three different areas. And if they pull your name out of the hat, they'll go through your first choice, second choice, and third choice. And you can mix and match archery, muzzleloader, rifle. Um, in New Mexico, muzzleloader, you can use a scope. Um, so with New Mexico, because there's no draw odds and everybody's equal every year, non-residents are limited to 6% of the tags. Non-residents that go with an outfitter are limited to 10%. So, I mean, the draw odds are a little bit tough, but uh, there's a lot of really cool areas like down in the Gila, units 15, 13, 16, 
you know, 17. Got to spend a ton of time down there. Tons of public land, great bulls. It's just a little tough drawing tags. Um, right. That's really what it comes down to. I think I've drawn two or three elk tags in about 15 years. And I'm not putting in for the best of the best. I'm putting in for areas where I know I can go in, work hard, and hopefully kill a really good um, bull. But I've got friends. I got a buddy, um, Trail, who drew unit a uh, unit this year and drew the same tag last year, archery. So he drew back to back years and he went in last year, killed a great bull. So he's a lucky guy. Hopefully he kills another big bull, but uh, on the antelope, it's a little different. You know, most of the antelope in New Mexico are found on private land. If you yeah. draw an archery tag, you can kind of hunt the unit that you're assigned to. If you draw a rifle tag, they'll actually assign you to a ranch. So, you know, you might own a 20,000 acre ranch. I own a 10,000 acre ranch and all the other ranches they draw out 500 guys and then the fishing game will assign these five guys to this ranch, these eight guys to this ranch, maybe two guys to this small ranch. So you get assigned a ranch. You draw a rifle antelope tag in New Mexico. You don't have to worry about getting permission because you got assigned a ranch to hunt. You'll get the ranch manager's, you know, phone number and you know, it's hit or miss. If that ranch was managed for a big antelope, you could kill a mm -hmm. giant. If it's been over hunted, you might not kill a giant. So, right. um, but you know, it's a great opportunity and New Mexico produces a ton of 75 to 80 inch goats and on the better units and they kill some giants. Yeah. I think from my experience with New Mexico, um, I feel like with antelope specifically, you're almost better to go buy a landowner tag because it, most of the guys that are selling landowner tags aren't really selling them for that much. Um, and it, I feel like the amount of time that you wait to draw an antelope tag there, you could get a much better experience on a landowner. I know like, for instance, like Matt Woodward, he'd run, he'd run some hunts, um, in New Mexico and I, you know, it's a fairly reasonable hunt to have a fully guided hunt. Um, and I'm sure there's guys out there that are just selling tags too, but a fully guided hunt with, you know, with a guaranteed tag and stuff for, you know, real, relatively inexpensive. Um, but if you really, in my opinion, if you want to go antelope hunting, put in for Wyoming, you know, put in for archery and Wyoming and get a tag and go. <laughs> I'm never not drawn. So... <laughs> But I don't put in for super trophy units either. But I've taken like six different, uh, yeah, six uh, antelope out of Wyoming. Um, no, you, your big states for giant antelope are going to be Arizona, Nevada, Wyoming, and New Mexico. So yeah. Wyoming, giant bucks can come from anywhere. And as you get to the northeast portion of the state, probably where you're applying, um, you know, those are going to have pretty much guaranteed tags. You can draw them every year. Some units you can get two tags. Start getting down to the red desert, all that stuff in the south. You know, it's going to be a lot harder to draw the tag. You yeah. put in for the type one or type two, draw it, pay the extra thirty some bucks, then you can hunt archery in that in that uh, time before. So, you now antelope hunting. Back to opportunity. Uh, there's not a lot of over the counter antelope hunting opportunities so kind of like the landowner tags in new mexico is kind of your best bet and that goes right back to what we said about alaska mountain goat mm -hmm. if you yeah. want to go on the hunt you're like just buy landowner tag is cheap same thing with mountain goat in alaska you want to just go on the hunt on your time just go to alaska and shoot a nice goat because not yeah. a lot of guys want to necessarily kill multiple mountain goats i mean i do but i mean most yeah, guys just so kill one <laughs> it's a notch notch on their uh on their uh, uh bucket list and then they move on so yeah. no but yeah, antelope and uh, elk in New Mexico are, are, you know, some of their better species. They got some giant sheep and they got some really cool exotics. I mean, I've been mm -hmm. down there and hunted the Floridos and we've hunted Audad and uh, it's really cool. The deer down there, I like the coos deer better than the mule deer personally. Some really yeah. cool units around the Hickoria. Um, they have some giant bucks, but drawn tags are super hard. Yeah, yeah. Now, Refresh my memory. New Mexico has over-the-counter archery, though, don't they, for, for deer? For uh, It depends on the unit. Like, okay. I know that you know, a lot of the tags, you know, they're set aside. So at least the stuff I hunt in the southeast, uh, southwest corner of the state, they're not over-the-counter for archery. It's all limited. Right. Um, and uh, Jeremiah just asked a question about Arizona units uh, for elk, but we'll, we'll – we'll address that in a second. I just want to finish up here with New Mexico. Um, yeah, New Mexico is like, it's strange. I, I drew an elk tag like 10 years ago that I applied, 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 never, never drew again. Uh, I drew an Ibex tag in 2015 and then drew again in 2016. So it's like, it's, 
it's crazy. I mean, you, you always have an opportunity, like you were saying earlier, because everybody's kind of on a level playing field. I mean, as a non-resident, you are severely limited because you're in a very small pool, um, and, you know, small tag pool. Just for instance, that Ibex tag, if you're putting in unguided, what, there's like five tags or six tags available for non-resident? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. but eight, before eight, they made that big switch and everybody was equal, you could draw it yeah. almost every year. Yeah. Yeah. And that's before it was popular. <laughs> you know what? I put yeah. in for nine years before I drew that tag. And I was like, I I was beside myself because everybody I knew was drawing it, you know, and then it all of a sudden became popular and then they made that switch and it's like forget about it. Everybody wanted to shoot an Ibex and you know, social media. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So, yep. um, okay. So Jeremiah was asking, what are the best to try with two or three points for elk? Um, I'm assuming you're talking about the rut and archery. Um, I don't know if you're talking about rifle, late rifle, or if you just want to go elk hunting, I would say late, ar- uh, late rifles are the easiest to draw, but go ahead and, uh, See if you could sum up some of that. Two or three points elk hunting in Arizona. So two yeah. or three points elk hunting, half the tags are going, you know, to random now, so everybody has a chance. Um, yeah. If I had two or three points, I'd be looking to hunt the November archery. I think yeah. with that, you'd be hunting every two or three years. You're hunting before those November rifle hunters. Um, you know, it's total spot and stock, but those bulls aren't receiving a ton of pressure. You're hunting some of the best units that have some giant bulls in them. So um, I burned my 13 points this year, and I'll be hunting late archery you know, every two to three years from now on. Um, so that's kind of would be my first choice if you're not an archery hunter, those late rifle hunts, um, you know, all those tags, you're going to have tons of hunters. You're going to have to work harder to get away from them. But mm-hmm. again, you know, you're going to weed through some broken bulls, but there's a lot of good bulls to be had in Arizona. So just yeah. stay away from unit nine. It's too flat. It's a pain. I hunted it late once. It's miserable. So, uh, but if I had two to three points in Arizona, that's what I'd be doing. Other than that, you're kind of like those old guys we talked about sheep. You know, you got 17, 18 points. All of a sudden you feel you have something now. It's like yeah. I have 17 or 18 points. So you, you, you put more value into those points than they're really worth. Um, I worked with a guy years ago by the name of Dave Losher, and he had the coolest saying ever. I wish it would have been mine, but he said, I'd rather pack deer than points. Yep. And that works with everything, <laughs> elk, deer, anything. It's like when a guy calls me up, he's like, I got 18 points for Colorado deer. I feel sorry for him. I'm like, wow, I would have rather you said, I've shot nine bucks in the last 18 years in Colorado than I have 18 points. So I'm all about not having a lot of points. Uh, If I do get a lot of points, it's just because I got bad luck. But I try to burn mine as soon as I can for the best time I can get because I want to be out there as as much as possible. You know, so two to three points in Arizona. Same strategy. Same strategy. You know, because the way I see it, I mean, people ask me this question. I get all the time. I oh, you know, what's the best trophy in it to put in for? And I'm like, especially if you're talking about Arizona, okay? We're talking about Arizona elk. There is literally a 400-inch bull in every unit that you can hunt here. I I don't care what unit you're talking about. On all the normal draw hunt, there you can if you do your work, there's a there's one to be found. Not to say that you're going to get them, you know, and, and they're not around every corner and every tree. There's not, you know, a screaming bull waiting for you to put an arrow in them. But so like, I really don't want to give up the unit, but <laughs> I drew a unit back to back years and it's not a unit that you would consider a trophy, you know, a trophy bull unit. And literally twice, two years in a row, I've seen the biggest bulls i've ever seen on the hoof on that hunt and going back to that late archery season i've drawn that two times unit seven and unit 5b and i've scored on both hunts um the tactics just change you know you're you're hunting them like deer and you're not you're not getting to call and you know chase bugles and stuff like that but the bulls are still there on that in 2011 when i drew that uh unit seven hunt um, and I, I've been scouring my video footage cause I'm trying to find it. We glassed up like 
a legitimate 415, 420 bull. And like, you know, I made a play for him and, and he gave me the slip. But I mean, that's a giant, giant bull for anywhere in the country. And that was a tag that nobody wanted. You could draw it back then when I drew it in 2011. Nobody put in for that tag. Nobody was putting in for that. Now some people have caught on, said, "Hey, you know, it could be done. Let me put in for the units." But, um, yeah, I don't think um, it's going back to what we were saying earlier. Do you want to hunt, or do you want to, you know, play lottery and just play around with the with the draws? I mean, I I, I want to hunt, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take whatever opportunity. I I purposely look for those units that have a happy balance between um, the chance of me drawing the tag and opportunity at um, at scoring an animal. So units that have good densities, um, respectable animals, um, or respectable trophy class animals, you know, nothing. I, I don't look for those units are like, oh, this is you know, like, I never apply for unit 10 in Arizona or unit one or anything like that. I never have in my whole life. Um, because I know that I can go hunt in a, I don't know, a 6A or something like that and find a really good bull still. And I'll get to hunt it two, three times before I would draw that other tag. So, um, I think um, that's all I had as far as questions. I know we were oh, we were starting to talk a lot, a little bit about o OTC tags, and I kind of threw you off that. What um, we talked a little bit about the elk. What about uh, deer for over the counter opportunity? So let's just I'll touch on a couple states. So <clears throat> the first one I'll touch on is Oregon. Oregon I like over the counter deer. You can buy the deer tag. It's going to start that last week of August go through September, last week of September. Um, you can go down and hunt pretty much anywhere in Southeast Oregon. It's total desert country, kind of looks like that Nevada, Idaho stuff. The Steens Mountain Ranges, you know, the Wahi, um, mm -hmm. you know, Wild Horse, Juniper, Malheur River, all that country. Uh, it's totally over the counter, unlimited tags. So you can go down there and you can hunt and you can spend as much time or as little time as you want. Anytime you can find water in association with some buckbrush, you know, you're going to be, you know, looking at some good deer in that country. You might have to cover a lot because the deer densities are low, but there's there's the true potential to turn up a giant in any of that country. Mm -hmm. um, the cool thing about Oregon is let's say you do buy that deer tag and you do not kill your buck. You can go back into November and you can go onto the western third of the state and you can hunt in November and you can hunt archery blacktail you know, as they're rutting on that same tag. So that same tag, you can kind of get two different completely – different hunts out of that same tag. So that's one opportunity for deer I like is Oregon. The next one's Idaho. You know, Idaho has lots of different season dates. So they've got a whitetail tag and a mule deer tag, or a general deer tag and a whitetail tag. I like personally getting the, the general tag because it gives me the opportunity to hunt everything. I can go to any of the units that are available and I can go there and I can hunt the archery season, the month of September. And if I don't kill, then I'm gonna have the October rifle hunt. So I can go through the October rifle hunt and let's say that I still didn't kill. Well, then there's a couple of units, you know, up north by Riggins that you can, you know, go into and they're more wilderness type units that they're going to run through, you know, like, you know, mid to late November. So you, you can, your hunt is still going. If you don't kill there, you can go late November, December up into the panhandle and you can chase whitetails. And right. if you still didn't kill there, you can drop all the way down to the southern end of Unit 55 and you can hunt bucks in November and December, you know, that are pushing out, still rutting in a sagebrush with a bow. So that one over the counter tag in Idaho pretty much took you from the first of September through December. So I like tags like that, that I'm not one week and, and I'm done. So right. Idaho and Oregon really like those for deer. Montana is not really going to have deer tags available over the counter. Same with Colorado, um, Wyoming, you know, 
you can find some leftover tags, but it's going to be spotty. You're going to be hunting with the GPS. Um, Utah, Nevada, everything else is going to be on a draw. And then you drop down into Arizona, and, you know, there's lots of opportunity in Arizona for archery hunts. You know, you can do the August hunt. If you don't kill, you can come back and you hunt late. You know, your tag's good for the whole year. I know some guys will go down and start at Christmas and hunt through the new year and shoot two bucks and do that every right. other year. You know, so, I mean, those are some of the really cool opportunities that are available. Once you get into the Dakotas, there's some cool stuff for the whitetails, um, you know, out into Nebraska and Oklahoma. But, uh, you know, for, for just big time opportunity mule deer, I'd kind of lean. And if you're an archery hunter, Oregon, if you're a rifle hunter, I'd probably go Idaho. You know, that, Idaho, that'd yeah. be where I'd be sinking my teeth to go in. And the cool thing about Idaho is let's say we go up there and I find a nice 24 inch, 150 inch buck and make a great shot, take him down, put him in the meat locker, go into town and buy another tag and go back out and keep hunting. So, I mean, how cool is that? You can shoot two bucks there, you know, That's so. Huge. There's so much opportunity in all that country. And then the thing I like about Idaho is there's so many different animals you can hunt. You know, right. I recommend to everybody that's hunting, you know, in any country that has elk has a wolf tag in their pocket. And, you know, there's lots and lots of opportunity, more opportunity than there is time. I guess that's the best way to put it. Yeah. I, I, I put it for Idaho every year. I just got my, uh, my Idaho refund back for mountain goat. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, um, you started to touch on the Dakotas. I, you know, I love hunting South Dakota. Uh, it's a great deer state. Uh, and it's actually a very good antelope state. Still my best buck that I've shot, um, is out of South Dakota, that very Western, you know, border of, uh, Wyoming, um, that whole prairie. And there's a lot of public land to be hunted. I mean, there's a lot of private land there too, and, and it pays to have an Onyx or a GPS that has, excuse me, um, you know, overlays. But it's a good, and it's and it's a draw, but it's a draw like first come first serve draw. So it's like basically a guaranteed tag for archery. Rifle is a little harder to draw, um, but I, I, it's a great unit. You know, I, I have gone four times, and I've shot three white tail and also my biggest muley so i'm gonna take my camera off my deal here that's my that's my south dakota uh mule deer and that's my south dakota antelope those are my two biggest of the species i've never actually shot a, you know that's my biggest muley i've ever shot 182 Oop. and uh Um, and that's my biggest, uh, antelope, uh, 78 inches. So I, um, it's a great place to hunt. I, I don't overlook it. I know people don't look at it much cause they don't really consider it's really not the West. It's the Midwest. It's where the Midwest meets the West. In my opinion, you could pretty much split the state down half the middle and, 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 you know, you'll feel like you're in the Midwest on the, on the East side of it. And you'll feel like you're in the West on the West side of it. Um, you know, that's a great, it's a great place to look. I'm out of fact, I'm going back this year. I'm hopefully uh, putting together a hunt here for November to go chase them around in a rut. I, I go bow hunting while the rifle hunt's going on um, and had great success. So, you know, and, right. and other opportunities to touch on that sometimes get overlooked is there's a lot of reservation opportunities, you know, throughout Arizona, New Mexico, Montana, where you can pick up tags very cheap. There's a lot of areas in Idaho and Montana that have reservations where for $2,000, $2,500, you can get two antelope tags and go with somebody and go on a guided antelope hunt for three days. So pretty darn inexpensive. You know, it's on a reservation, you know, so there's those opportunities. And the other one is landowner tags. You know, everybody thinks of landowner tags and they just see huge price tags and they're like, oh, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000. You know, mm -hmm. I hunt Colorado deer every single year. I draw a tag and with my one point and then next year I don't have a point. So I'll pick up a landowner tag for four to 600 bucks. And then the wow. next year I'll draw a tag. So every year I'm hunting Colorado and I'm going and I'm hunting these units that have $400 landowner tags and they might be archery, might be muzzleloader. And you know, I'm killing really nice, respectable bucks. And every once in a while we kill a real great buck, you know, but it comes back to just wanting to hunt every year and not mm -hmm. wait. So just right. because, you know, a tag is cheap, just doesn't mean that it's not good. It doesn't exactly. mean that you can't go in there and work hard 
to make something happen. So no, I mean, this time of year, guys didn't draw guys are thinking opportunity and guys are thinking land under tags, you know, and like uh, Logan hedges runs our land under tag, uh, for the hunt full program. So right. you can go to hunt full, look at our land under tag page, see every tag that's available. Maybe there's something in there for you. Talk to him that gives an extra hunt. And then we've been working really hard right now. Isaiah, you know, Austin, me, Jared, Stan, and Garth on getting our August and July issues together. And those are complete opportunity. The July and August magazine are nothing but over the counter opportunities that you can pick up a tag and go hunting. So, awesome. I mean, we're just like everyone else. We're going to fill in our seasons. You know, I'm probably going to start in Oregon and uh, I'm probably going to end in Arizona. And I would say that, you know, eight to 10 of the hunts that I'll do this year are going to be over the counter tags. You know, it's yeah. same thing with my kids. It's like, you want your kids to hunt, get them hunting. Don't right. build them points. You know, like if you wait till your kid's 14 or 15, you might've lost him to sports and friends and everything else, but yeah. you can get them hunting it. 10, 12 years old, I mean, they're just going to be, you know, jacked and excited and want to continue to do it. So I don't know. I think the whole social media world is pushing trophy hunting, trophy hunting, and, you know, everything's got to be DIY and hardcore. And if you, if you can't lift 500 pounds, you can't kill a deer. But <laughs> I think it really comes down to just having fun with your friends and family and kids. And, you know, when you pull the trigger on something, be happy with it, no matter what. Yeah, I exactly. mean, you know, if someone's going to take something away from an animal you killed, that's not someone you want in your life. I mean, right. I don't care if I watch a, a 30 year old guy kill a fork and horn or a 400 inch bull. I'm going to be just as happy for him. You know, if he's so. happy, if he's got a smile on his face. I use my father in law as an example all the time. Uh, a few years back, he shot his first antelope. And I mean, like this, but you would have thought he shot the biggest goat in the, in the, country because he had this big shit eating grin on his face he was so happy he was hugging everybody slapping everybody's backs he bought everybody dinner that night it was his first spot and stalk archery antelope it was first antelope period and he was just super happy and that's what it's all about you know sharing those times and those experiences and you know matching some of for us some of us and, and myself included it's about matching your wits against you know uh, a formidable uh adversary and whether that's a two point or a, you know a giant you know five by six or whatever you know it it's uh it's to each his own and i i'm i've i've been a big proponent of that you know whatever makes you happy just just have fun with it man so yep. well i want to thank you for coming on and sharing some knowledge with us uh where can our listeners find out more about you and hunting fool um, so you can go to huntful.com and that's our website and you can breeze through that and uh, follow us there, um, see about us, learn more about us. Um, if you subscribe to the Huntful magazine, it's $100 a year. You get 12 publications. You get to mm -hmm. personally talk to me, Garth Jensen, you know, Austin Atkinson, Isaiah, Jared, any of the other guys in there about draw strategies, um, application strategies. Um, just if you did draw a tag, like I've been on the phone all morning with guys that are finding out that you're Colorado and, you know, helping them set up their hunts. So, right. I mean, you know, we, we can help you find outfitters. We can help you do it, do it yourself. And, you know, that's what we're here for. So we've been doing this for 21 years now. And, um, you know, we got a, a member draw list that's pretty darn long where a guy draws a great tag. He can, he can follow you there. Um, if you want to follow me personally, you can find me on Instagram. I'm just Robert Hanneman or on Facebook, Robert Hanneman. Um, but, uh, you know, we try to keep up to date on the majority of our stuff there, but, uh, if you go to Instagram or, you know, Facebook, anything, Twitter, you can go to hunt and fool and you can see kind of all of us, you know, going through our year there. So you no, know, cool. any questions, check out hunt and fool. And, uh, like I said, we appreciate you giving us the opportunity to come in here. Oh, and, thank you. Uh, like I said, it's. It's pretty cool. It's an exciting time of year. We still got a few more draw results around the corner. Um, yep. You know, guys at the office. We uh, Garth uh, Garth drew a Arizona rifle late bull tag. I drew an archery bull tag. Uh, Jeff Warren drew a Nevada um, uh -huh. a bull tag this year. Jared Lyle drew a Nevada archery tag. Austin Jeez. Atkinson knocked it out of the park. Drew uh, Idaho uh, bighorn sheep tag this year. And yep. uh, um, I know uh, Stan has got a third season in Colorado deer tag that he's pretty jacked about this year. And then uh, I know Isaiah's, I think he's leaning a hard on over the counter opportunities. So, yeah. you know, it's going to be a, a great fun year for us. And uh, like I said, follow along on our adventures. It's a, it's a great time. We do a lot of exciting stuff. 
Awesome. Well, thank you again. And uh, I'm sure, like I said, we'll have you guys on again once we get closer to getting back into draw season so guys can start thinking about, you know, where and what to put in for. And we'll, you know, open the door back up for people to ask questions and so on and so forth. So, um, well, thank you again. And uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. All right, cool. It went well. I uh, was quite a few people listening. In. Uh, I'll I'll post this up as a regular podcast, and then I'll put it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'll probably take it down off of Facebook just because I'd rather people go to my YouTube and watch it. So yeah, right, so we'll make no, some and I would the damn shit. <laughs> yeah, I would send it to uh, Austin, you know, and then Austin can uh, like. I don't know. Between me and Garth, we've probably done 20 podcasts for different people at this point. Oh, wow. Uh, but uh, so he can go ahead and, and, you know, like a lot of times he'll put an email out and be like, hey, check out this and throw links to it. So he can do that for you, too. But Sweet. Austin would be the guy to do all that stuff. Awesome. Appreciate it. Um, hey, no problem, man. Real quick on that, uh, on those landowner tags for 400 bucks in Colorado. What's that all about? That's something I think I want to do. <laughs> so um, I... You know, kind of part of our job is to learn areas. So, like, I just kind of threw a dart last year and uh, picked up a 501 muzzleloader tag and went in and okay. killed a 178 inch buck. And wow. then, uh, yeah, it was it was it was really great. And then, so I got another one last year, and I had the me and Garth Jensen drew the elk tags, and I picked up the deer tag. Uh, I think I paid. I think it might have been 600 bucks last year, mm -hmm. and uh, went in there for you know mid September and was chasing great bucks and. Uh, we could have killed a better buck. I ended up wounding a big buck, like a buck, a 180 buck. Oh, wow. But Austin, Austin ended up killing that buck. Um, oh, wow. You know, yeah. So because he had the third season rifle tag and he went in and shot the buck. Um, same drainage he was in. And you know, he's a stud. He's got two kickers off both sides. But uh, no, so I mean, it's there's a lot of, you know, $500, four to $600 landowner tags that, you know, are great hunts in Colorado that you just, you know, they're not the best season dates. You're just going to have to work harder on them. But no, we've killed some great care. stuff over there. Yeah. I don't, I'm not afraid of working hard. Yeah. Actually, I kind of prefer it. So no. cool. All right, cool, man. Well, man. thanks for taking the time and I'll uh, talk with you guys soon. All right, buddy. Sounds good. Have Anything else, Steve, let me know. We'll Bye. do. Bye.